Hello, everyone. <clears throat> it's me, Jordan Smith, the voice and the astrologer for this YouTube channel, Nonconformist Conscience. There's a couple of things that I want to talk about for this week. And first, oh my God, I have like a hair. Excuse me. Um, first, I want to let you guys know that we are just a few days out from the EA online conference, and I would absolutely love to see more of you all's faces during that conference. If you haven't already purchased the online conference pass, it is 15 lectures with yours truly. Each lecture is two hours long, and so that's the over 30 hours of some really inspiring um lectures that are being given over different concepts and different teachings that haven't really been touched on before. So I, I mean, I just feel really excited and honored to be offered to teach for this conference. And also I'm excited to learn from my fellow colleagues, friends, and astrologers some whom I know, some whom I don't know. Um, but the conference is, I feel like it's $246, $249. But if you use the coupon code JORDAN, J-O-R-D-Y-N, 10, um, on their website, you can receive 10% off. And the cool thing is, is that this is online. It's to bring together community and astrology and to also... Um, receive amazing teachings um, through the lens of evolutionary astrology by some of the best world-renowned astrologers. And also, um, it's at a really affordable price, I feel like. I have gone to conferences in the past, and they are really expensive. So I love that EA has, in true fashion with the association, there's such an emphasis on giving, sharing, and inclusion and making this affordable, especially right now during what's going on in the world with inflation. I'm just really proud to be a part of an association that is not about self-interest, but it's more about bringing together community and sharing these teachings in a way that's accessible to everyone. So there's that. Also, I still have my fall eclipse special going on for $80. It's 60 minutes. I will answer any of your questions about the eclipses. So if you sign up for that, be prepared. Ask me questions. I love questions. And also my Libra birthday special is going on right now. So that's $75 for 90 minutes where I go over your natal chart, your soul's evolutionary intention in this lifetime, and also um, your solar return for this year. So you understand some of the things that are coming up for you. I have a sneaking suspicion that some of you are going to be really impacted by this Libra solar eclipse. So I can't wait to see more of you in my Zoom meeting or Zoom room. I love connecting with each one of you. It's such an honor and a privilege. And without further ado, let's jump into this week's astrology. I want us to remember that we are in this like eclipse portal, right? It's it's sandwiched in between that Pisces lunar eclipse and then the upcoming um, Libra solar eclipse that's happening on October 2nd. And so I want you to know that this... Eclipse is going to be ruled by Venus in the sign of Scorpio. I'm going to grab my notes here. Well, of the transits that I, I want to make sure I don't miss anything. I want to show you guys the chart for the ingress of Venus into the sign of Scorpio. I did a short written report that I will post the link to below. Um, it's not very long this week. Uh, I'm juggling... Uh, preparation for the conference and then also my kiddos. So, but I wanted to do a written report just because there are people out there who prefer them. So I, I have one this week and it's very straight to the point. So 
on the 23rd, 22nd, depending on where you were at in the world, there that's whenever um, Venus entered the sign of Scorpio also on the equinox. So whenever the sun entered the sign of Libra as well, um, Venus entered the sign of Scorpio while the sun entered the sign of Libra, excuse me. Um, so the sun is ruled by, by this Venus and Scorpio, but there's a couple of interesting things that I want to point out. First off, let's talk a little bit about Venus in the sign of Scorpio. In the sign of Scorpio, Venus wants us to get down to business. Like, it's like, okay, what do you need to look at within yourself, your relationship to self, your Scorpionic tendencies, your emotions, your inner psychology? Also, on the flip side, what do you need to look at with your relationships with others? How do your emotional and psychological tendencies affect and have a ripple effect in your relationships with others? Scorpio is a sign that likes to confront. Um, anyone who has a lot of Scorpio or eighth house, they know this. And that confrontation is usually an internalized confrontation that happens when there is an external event that's going on that can trigger that. Sometimes, though, it can just be our own inner emotional and psychological dynamics, and we're having to confront them. Um, as an example, I have kind of a lot, a lot of this stuff in my chart, um, but I have Capricorn. And so this is actually really good for me to talk about and share because this Venus is ruled by Pluto and Capricorn right now. Capricorn is about where we can judge others or suppress things or where we feel judged by others as well. Um, and like I said, Scorpio likes to confront. So as a little uh, intel about myself, whenever I was younger, I would have preconceived judgments about other people. And what I would end up finding <laughs> is that anytime I made a judgment about someone and I projected some type of higher moral or self-righteous kind of dynamic onto them, at some point, I would find myself in that exact same situation. And what it did is it confronted me with a few things. It taught me lessons about incorrect judgment or projecting judgment and self-righteousness. This is like my early 20s. It also taught me about we don't really know what we would do in a situation unless we're in there. In that same situation, it also taught me about how um, whenever you point one finger at someone, you've got four pointing back at you. Um, and it also taught me this very scorpionic lesson of what exists in other people exists in us too. But within the sign of Scorpio, the confrontation that it's, what it's teaching us through our confrontations is about understanding who we are, who we aren't, and who we absolutely cannot be. And so what it taught me is to not judge. I cannot be someone who judges others off of some type of conditioning of a value system. We see it a lot um, within religions, right? People make these judgments um, about women who have abortions or... Um, I mean, the list goes on. I don't want to make this political, but it's like a Capricornian Scorpionic thing um, where our conditioning, whether it's cultural, social, religious, societal, we will create judgments, Capricorn, when people are in situations. And so there are people who make these judgments about women who have um, abortions or who do certain things with their bodies. And then guess what? Oh, Pluto Scorpio comes around and they have to be confronted with that same situation. And so it also challenges someone about their own conditioning around their own beliefs, the ways that they structure their values or their beliefs around things. And hopefully it gets them to understand that 
um, sometimes that's not in alliance or in alignment with natural law of giving, sharing, and inclusion. So I just wanted to speak about that for a second before I, I, I dive into this. But this is this dynamic that can happen when Venus is in the sign of Scorpio, especially while Venus is being ruled by Pluto in Capricorn. This is not going to happen again in her lifetime. Venus being ruled by a Pluto in Capricorn. So if you think back to 2008 and the 14, 14 years that this transit has been going on, there have been 14 different times that Venus has been in the sign of Scorpio and ruled by that Pluto in Capricorn. And this is, again, this eclipse started off this eclipse season started off with a lunar eclipse, which is usually it's a solar eclipse. It's wanting us to start something new and then close something up. This cycle of eclipses started with a lunar eclipse that was speaking to closing things up so that new structures can occur. And it's the ways in which our conditioning or how we've structured our emotional, psychological dynamics has an effect on our inner relationship to self, our relationships with others. And once this uh, solar eclipse in Libra happens, it's really saying there's a birthing of how we relate to other people is trying to take a new structure, a new form. And so I want us to think about that as I'm talking about Venus and Scorpio right now. And it's last time of being ruled by Pluto at 29 degrees. So let me share this chart with you for a second. So we've got Venus in Scorpio in the third house with Libra conditioning it. And Venus is ruled by Pluto retrograde in the sixth house in Capricorn and Venus is conjunct the south node of Mars and the south node of Venus so these planetary nodes and if we're looking at Mars here in Cancer there we have it and its south node is is here conjunct this Venus We've also got Venus ruling the sun now, still the south node, and Uranus, retrograde. So I want you guys to take that in for just a second, and then I want to talk about this with you all. So... With Venus falling in the third house of this chart in the sign of Scorpio, conjunct the south node of Mars and the south node of Venus is really saying there is information, third house, that can come up regarding our past, Venus ruling the lunar south node, <clears throat> and conjunct the south node of Mars. Mars is in the sign of Cancer and ruling the south node of Venus. There is information that can come up right now from our past and, and our relationships with others to take us and to force us to confront what is going on inside of us on an emotional and psychological level. To pull in Pluto and Capricorn in the sixth house, ruling that Venus, that south node of Mars, that south node of, of Venus as well, in order for us to metamorphose structures, Capricorn being structures, Pluto, Scorpio being metamorphosis. So there's this need to continue to improve and to purge, sixth house, these old structures in order to have a metamorphosis occur. There's something I want to talk about with that term metamorphosis. We've got 
Scorpio action going down right now. We've got Piscean action going down right now. And we have Uranus, an Aquarian dynamic, but Uranus is in Taurus. So Uranus in Taurus has been about us transforming our inner relationship to self, meaning that we are taking what we don't like and taking that out and then putting something else back in in order to transform. That's an Aquarian Uranian dynamic transformation. It's where a structure is transformed. Pisces is about transcendence, transcendence of limitations, transcending time, space, reality. It's something that goes on for forever. It transcends. And then you have Scorpionic, Plutonian, eighth house metamorphosis. That means that it's different than transformation. It's different than transcendence. It means that, and make no mistake, that Scorpio naturally sextiles Capricorn. So it pulls in what I'm about to tell you. From <clears throat> confronting Scorpio, our inner psychology, our emotional dynamics, our own limitations, who we are, who we aren't, who we don't want to be, who we cannot be, we can metamorphosize, meaning that it metamorphoses metamorphosis is about changing a structure all right so a tadpole becomes a frog a tadpole and a frog is not the same thing a caterpillar becomes a moth a caterpillar and a moth is not the same thing the actual structure has changed that is metamorphosis and that is part of this dynamic that's going on we are transforming our inner relationship so that a metamorphosis, the structure of how we relate to others, the structure of our relationships can change. A metamorphosis can occur. That's Venus ruling all of this Libra. That's also um, pulling in the Pisces that's going on right now. It's so we can transcend our own inner limitations around these dynamics that keep us stuck. So during this transit of Venus and Scorpio, that is happening until October 14th, I believe I have it written in my report. Um, there can be instances where old traumatic dynamics that have affected our inner relationship to self Uranus and Taurus, Uranus correlating to trauma, Taurus correlating to our inner relationship to self can come up so we can be confronted with how that has had an impact upon how we relate to others and how we relate to ourselves. And that is the nature of this Venus in Scorpio. And that Venus in Scorpio falls in the third house upon its ingress into the sign of Scorpio. Um, so we can have instances where we are recalling, remembering, or also reliving for some um, similar experiences of where we have had the misuse of another's power, of their resources, where we have experienced abandonment or betrayal or some type of loss. Um, it can even be lost like grief or all of a sudden someone's not there and they once were or even I had this job and it wasn't. There's all ways that this can show up. But ultimately, this is to give us knowledge. All right. Third house about these dynamics going on inside each single one of us right now. That way we can put this to bed. That way we can confront, like, this is not who I want to be, or this is, yeah, I feel proud of myself for how I handled this situation or maybe not that situation. And with Pluto and Capricorn ruling this Venus, we are called to self-reflect in order to purge these old dynamics so a metamorphosis of this structuring can occur. And so it's also about looking at our 
are we projecting the past into the present moment? Are we recycling or are we composting Scorpio in order for a metamorphosis to come to fruition, in order for a new structure in our lives to happen? And then Pluto is ruled by Saturn and Pisces retrograde, and it falls in the seventh house of that chart. If you want, you could go back and look at that. But it's a lot of these emotional dynamics coming up and confronting us with our emotional patterns. The south node of Mars, Mars is in, conjunct that Venus. Mars is in Cancer right now. It's exiting a square with the nodes. Um and with Saturn and Pisces retrograde in that seventh house, it's wanting us to transcend old limitations around how we have done relationships with others. And that means that we have to look at ourselves first and hold ourselves accountable by confronting ourselves. And that's hard work sometimes. Lord knows I've I've been dealing with it for, gosh, for forever, I feel like. Um even just recently, I had some things go on and I was like dysregulated in my nervous system. I had so much anxiety and I had to stop and pause and think about, wait a second, am I projecting my past, these feelings of where I've felt betrayed, lost or abandoned onto a situation that's occurring right now? And I had to hold myself accountable and be vulnerable with myself and say, yeah, a little bit of that is going on, but I'm also seeing things that I don't like. And so what this is helping us all do with Pluto and Capricorn ruling this and the whole restructuring and yada, yada, yada that I'm talking about is that it's, it is helping us to, um, it gives us a chance to improve, to practice, that lunar eclipse in Pisces was like signaling this is a time to close things up by practicing what you preach, by practicing and walking your talk. And so I had to stop and reflect Capricorn and hold myself accountable in my own emotions and then to make a correct call, a choice to not repeat the past patterns of my own emotional dynamics, but to create new action with the choices that I make going forward. And that is a lot of what can be happening right now is these instances evoke something inside of us that reminds us of the past. And it's about us being in our own authority and saying, no, I'm not going to behave in that way anymore. I am not that same person. And so I need to sit here. I need to honor what's coming up because it's signaling something, but I need to practice how I'm going to move forward, how I can make a correct judgment, a new path in order to move, like move forward and not be the same old person, to not make the same old choices, to not recycle. And so that can be coming up for so many people. So I wanted to speak to that. And then on the 25th, which is tomorrow here in the States, Mercury is in Virgo still. It will oppose Neptune. It's approaching the opposition right now. So this is really helping us understand what needs to be healed. Like, oh, what have I learned um, through these experiences? And how can I promote more healing for myself? It can promote a lot of clarity. It can also make us feel like, well, I think I know what this is, but now I'm not so sure. And that's okay. That is like the Neptunian properties. Here's the thing. Later on in the day, Mercury is going to trine and a disseminating trine to Pluto and Capricorn at 29 degrees. And that can give us the clarity that we need that information that clarity can be disseminated to us and so it's about distilling what it is that we've taken in and having an inner gnosis in order to make correct judgments in order to make correct choices in order to restructure remembering that mercury is trining pluto and capricorn for the last time that it's ever going to trine 
Pluto and Capricorn in this lifetime. This is happening during this eclipse sandwich, right? So again, a lot of information, a lot of insight, a lot of clarity, a lot of confusion, a lot of ahas, a lot of knowing can happen. Um, but it's about not denying reality. If there's something that you need to do, a choice that you need to make that you've been, your intuition, your gut is telling you this is what you need to do. Don't deny it. This can be where we're confronted with a choice on how to move forward. And then we get to practice. Am I that same person I was or am I not? And then on the 26th, Mercury is going to enter the sign of Libra, ruled by Venus and Scorpio. And this helps us to practice our listening skills and how we communicate with others in our relationships. So are we going to do lower vibration Venus and Scorpio and project all types of shit onto people from the past? Or are we going to really listen to where they're coming from here, where they're coming from, even if it is confronting us with a wound or some type of pain or some type of prior dynamic? How are you going to move forward? How are you going to communicate? Can you be vulnerable? This is coming up for me. I have, the, I have one of my girlfriends. I absolutely adore her. She lives here in Oklahoma with me. And she's been having a lot for her coming up with her new relationships that, um, especially one in particular where she gets really anxious and she's, oh my gosh, but she's really beautifully... Um, navigating this by speaking and and just communicating what's coming up for her um and here's the thing with mercury and libra and all of this libra and energy going on it, especially with venus and scorpio it's about discernment discerning who is a safe person that i can talk to right now who maybe isn't the person who can hear me and so i'm not going to go not because I don't love them, but it's also I'm not going to punish myself, right? Like I'm not going to, why would I do that? Because it's also about not getting validation from other people, but maybe just expressing oneself. As humans, we all need to be validated at some point, but this Venus and Scorpio can really have us being confronted with how and why we seek validation outside of ourselves and applying the knowledge that we're learning right now um, so we can become more secure. Venus and Scorpio can also, ruling all of this, can also be confronting us where our own motivations around saying things to people, expressing ourselves to people, or our own motivations of the actions that we take or... Um, and if it's our motivation around maintaining a status quo, this is the time that that pattern and structure can be dissolved and it can create the metamorphosis of a new structure if we consciously utilize it. <coughs> and on the 29th, we're going to have a triple conjunction of the sun the lunar south node and Mercury, all at the sixth degree mark of Libra, all being ruled by that Venus and Scorpio, which will be at six degrees as well, and in conjunct in a full phase to the north node in Aries, ruled by Mars and Cancer. And to me, this is like putting to bed the past ways of communicating, listening to others who we share with, how, all of these lessons of the past coming into a culmination. And also it's where some of us with that Venus ruling all of that and in Scorpio can be confronted with power dynamics, my will versus someone else's will, Aries, and how that evokes an emotional reaction or emotional response and the need to confront ourselves with, am I going to behave in the past, south known, or am I going to apply the knowledge, Mercury, that I've been learning as a way to truly listen, to truly heal, and to also honor myself, to not abandon myself? That way I can cultivate 
new emotional patterns. North node ruled by Mars and Cancer that helps to cultivate a new structure, metamorphosis of a new structure. So it's giving us an opportunity of practice before this new uh, moon uh, solar eclipse happening in Libra on the second. So practice, 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 practice. And the interesting thing at this time is that while that triple conjunction is going down, the with Mercury, the Sun, and the South Node, all in Libra, the North Node of Mercury is in Virgo at 21 square to Jupiter in um, Gemini, ruled by that Mercury. That is in a first quarter square. So there is this need to act upon the information that we've been distilling as a way to have improvement. What is the knowledge you've taken in? How do you feel like this is going to expand your own inner awareness around dynamics? It can help us understand the natural law of unity and diversity, seeing there's this Gemini Libra dynamic, if we have the willingness to hear. It also teaches us to purge old dynamics where we have expectations of, if I am authentic and I say what I need to say, then this person's going to do this. No, that doesn't always happen. A person can choose to not hear. But it's what you do with that information. How do you hold your own boundary? Libra. Libra is people can oftentimes think that a boundary is about control. I've said this before. I'm going to say this again right now. This week can be gearing us up to really learn these lessons of the boundary lies within the one who is making it. Meaning. If I express, if I communicate with you, Mercury and Libra, something that's going on, when I take the initiative, that action, Aries, to express that, Mercury and Libra, that person can do whatever they want with it. So it teaches us a lesson in our own expectations, but it also, from that counterpoint of the feedback that we receive from that person's actions, whether they want to be defensive, they have an inability to listen to us, or on the flip side, they do, and they want to hear, and they, you know, they truly can, and then the, there's an open dialogue, but no matter what happens, the boundary lies within the one who creates it, meaning that if that person cannot honor you, if that person is defensive, can't hear you, you're going to have to make a choice. Am I going to self-abandon or am I going to be an in integrity? I might have to make a choice that says you're not someone that I feel like can hear me. So therefore, I'm not going to communicate in this type of way with you anymore. Maybe you're realizing that there's inequality in the ways in which you communicate or hear and there's no reciprocity. Maybe this is someone that that relationship doesn't need to be maintained anymore. It needs to be perched. There's a variety of ways that this can come up over the next week or so. And so it's important to remember that. And then there's a beautiful Brene Brown quote that I'm going to share with you all since this is Mercury entering Libra season. When you are communicating with another and you are taking all that you've been learning up until this point, and you're choosing to practice the ways in which you communicate, the ways in which you maintain your integrity, your sovereignty. When you're communicating, if you are dealing with someone else who can't hear, who's defensive, who projects, because that is something that happens a lot. It's a universal experience, unfortunately, right now. There is a beautiful Brene Brown quote that I love telling people, and she says, don't puff up, don't back down, stand your sacred ground. And that is a beautiful way of looking at how to maintain a healthy boundary that's not based in control. So this is your weekly forecast gearing up for next week's solar eclipse in the sign of Libra, um, I want to hear how this is going on for each and every one of you right now. I want to, um, you know, hear your feedback or um, 
what you've been practicing on and um, just remember, let's not project the past onto the present moment. There's a new way to move forward. There's a new way to communicate, a new way to listen, a new way to relate with others, a new structure is wanting to be metamorphosed right now. And so we have to do the Virgo-like six house work and practice it because it's not going to be perfect. It takes practice. If we even think about how the brain is, every time we do something new and we practice it, it um, creates a new neural pathway. And so even right now, we're needing to cultivate new, new neural pathways in order for a restructuring of our brain or consciousness to occur. And that's part of Saturn and Pisces. So practice, practice, practice. Don't puff up, don't back down, stand your sacred ground. Um, and I hope you all have a beautiful week and I will be here next week. I will be posting a conversation I did with Rob Shahal and Sue Hilliard probably tomorrow. Honestly, it's one of my favorite conversations I have ever done. Um, I share my chart. And I talk about how I got into astrology. And I also tell people a little bit about um, some of my backstory of, yeah, how I got into it. I have a packed eighth house. So a lot of it was um, trauma and wanting to understand myself and why I was the way that I was and wanting to be of service and wanting to help. And so I get really vulnerable in that video. And I hope that you guys enjoy it. Because when I speak about some of the things um, like abuse and different kind of scorpionic dynamics, it's because I feel like People need to know that they're not alone when certain things happen to them and it can actually birth something really special in your life. Um, and so I will be, like I said, I'll post that tomorrow um, if you want to actually get to know who I am a little bit more and my path to astrology. So <clears throat> I hope to see more of you this, I think this week I might have one or two spots, but I know next week I have a few spots, but over the next few weeks, I hope to see more of you. Um, and I will see you all later. Have a beautiful week.